All right, so we've got a Kendall Jackson, the Vintners, Vintners mm. uh, Reserve, Zinfandel mm -hmm. from the north coast of America, the Jackson Estate 2020. Um, can you explain what Zinfandel is, please? Yeah, so Zinfandel, thank you, Angus. Zinfandel is a, is a red grape variety that is uh, is known as such in the northern, well, I mean, in North America, uh, specifically US. Uh, so it's a quite a different grape variety and it can be very, very, very di diverse in terms of styles. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the grape grows uh, and ripens very unevenly. So while you may have some what they call uh, millerandage or in another name chicken chickens and hens and that is because uh, when the grape uh, when the bunch grows uh, some berries uh, are kept very very small so quite tart uh, and ripe and green mm. while others are fully fully ripe almost in raisins all in the same bunch so it's okay. kind of impossible to to have the whole bunch fully ripen at the same time all right, let's talk about the appearance of this wine. As I poured it into the wine, I had a little bit of a misleading look. We actually have a really nice light in front of us, which does help with um, assessing the color of wine. Mm -hmm. But I did see some purple um, yeah. in this bottle uh, in this as I poured it out, but it has diluted a little bit. Mm -hmm. But there is still some, am I wrong, in saying just a touch of purple or is that yeah, just... Yeah, a touch of purple, definitely. So which other wine could have this color? A Malbec. A Malbec. A Malbec or a very young Shiraz. Perfect. That's very good. So there's wine as well, uh, purple, and then uh, if you turn it into this the gray, uh, or sorry, the white uh, back mm -hmm. of the table, so there's a red tone to it as well. Yeah, so of course. while it has a deep... Hold it up like, to the light, Carlos, so you can really get an idea. Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, a lot of red, yeah. A purple, purple staining tears yep. with a red, like with a red, uh, red rim. Yeah. So, but yeah, look, when you swirl, look at this. How many like staining tears, tears are very, deep, very, um, very fast running, but also quite thick at the same time. A lot of arches and they, and they're stained. There's color to it. So, so can I, tell us. can I guess a couple of things it could tell us? Yeah. It's a concentrated wine. Concentrated wine. Yep. Um, and it also could be reflected by the ripeness of the fruit, mm -hmm. which very would make sense for American. High. High, yeah, high, high ripeness. High ripeness Sorry. of the fruit, yeah. Uh, which could indicate that uh, the alcohol mm -hmm. could be also, I don't know, high. Very high, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, well, that's what it looks like on the tears. So if we were to pick, uh, you know, I mean, and this is obviously just, uh, we, we're still on the, we're still on, just on the appearance, right? So, you know, yeah. And, and we can, we could already take some, not conclusions, because you can't take conclusions just from the appearance, but you can start processing some things. It's not a Pinot Noir, it's not a Gamay, it's not a Nebbiolo, it's very unlikely to be a Sangiovese. Mm -hmm. So all those little, you start putting things in perspective, right? With this wine. And yeah, that's that's right. Okay. That's totally right. I would never come close to guessing a Zinfandel, even if I knew it well just off the appearance, but I'm looking for the nose. Once, yeah, I think once we try, it will be much more, uh, much more clear. Poof. Smells um, like a cake, Christmas cake. Christmas cake? Just watch that. Christmas cake, licorice. Um, yeah. Red licorice? Red licorice, which I actually don't enjoy. I don't enjoy licorice. Um, okay, everyone take that off your Christmas gifts for Carlos to so, thank him for the free podcast. No, please, no. Yeah. Uh, a lot of, it's, a, it's kind of a mix of, and, and that just makes sense, a mix of red and black fruits, mostly red fruits. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, cooked strawberry and strawberry tart, um, cherry, red cherry, red plum, like heavy. It's like, it smells heavy, right? Yeah, definitely red fruits. There does Brumble. seem to be a perception of black fruit, but blue um, blueberries. Yeah, blue heavy berries. blueberries. Yeah. Uh, heavy, like you know. Um, smells ripe. Smells very, very ripe. Like nothing, nothing about this wine is unripe. Mm. It's super ripe. It's super jammy. Uh, that bramble blueberry, uh, dried, almost you know, uh, like kind of desiccated plum almost. Okay. Um, Oak. Uh, yeah. To be honest, I even I, 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 I think, think it's oak. quite typical, quite typical for these wines to use oak, and and that and I, that reflects I smell oak. yeah, and that reflects uh, as uh, as baking spice, clove, and nutmeg, 
Maybe it could be um, Ooh, oak, heavy, heavy, heavy oak, oak chips. Heavy. It could be, yeah. All right. That's a lot to take in on the nose. Yeah. Interested to see what this is like on the palate. Uh, cheers. So would. So would. When I, even before I just, even before I put the mouth on the glass, I have the, I have an idea of what I'm going to taste, you know, it's like this really sweet character fruit. Um, and I can imagine those berries, some of them being so tart and green, uh, that they will give a slight freshness to the wine, but then the heavy stuff, the brick bramble and black fruit and black currant and the really ripe dried blueberries almost uh, will be there as well. But but this is, you know, out, out of almost imagination. Carlos is having his first sip now. I've already had two while he was just talking about mm -hmm. what he believes he's going to taste. I'm going to go through the tasting. Mm -hmm. And can you please tell me and stop me when I'm mm -hmm. wrong? Mm -hmm. So sure. we are going to start with uh, sweetness and dryness. This is a dry wine, not off dry, but a dry, dry. dry wine. Dry. But there is a sense of sweetness. Yeah, a lot. The acid is surprisingly high. Mm -hmm. I would put this at, as I take another sip, a high acid wine. Damn it. No, no, I wouldn't go for high acid because for high acid, you would think of- uh, Barolo. Yeah. Barolo. Medium plus. Nebbiolo. Can I have medium plus? Medium plus, yes. Medium I should plus. have said that. Medium plus, sure. Uh, and remember when we we had the course, wines can be acidified as well. Yeah. You know, they can add a little bit of acid where when there is a very, very hot climate or when it's a very, very big varietal, they can add a little bit of acid to freshen up a little bit the wines. But then again, also mm. thinking of Zinfandel as it is, the berries, um, the berries uh, can be quite green and tart, so that can add a little bit of freshness Absolutely. in a sense. But you okay, know, I, I think, think it's overall, overall, it's uh, you know, yeah, at, medium at best, plus. medium plus at best. Yeah. But you would call it medium? Uh, no, I would call it medium, medium plus. plus. Okay, I think there's quite a lot of that mouth watering. I, I would not, I I would not go for a high because yeah, that's me not. Either. And yeah. when I say Barolo, I'm yeah. talking about the Nebbiolo, yeah, um, grape, the Sangiovese. I'm going to move on to I'm undeterred. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to tannins. Mm -hmm. And the tannins are quite grippy. They're grabbing my, and by grippy, which is a term that I know you use, yep. um, I assess the word grippy and fine tannins, which is mm -hmm. sort of the two distinctions. Fine tannins being this kind of nice coat of the mouth, mm -hmm. whereas this kind of feels like it's just grabbing a little bit. Mm -hmm. Is that sort of, yep. I mean, I know the yep. name sort of dictates yep. that to be what it is, but it does feel like it's just kind of there, whereas tannins on a nice fine wine kind of, come and then pass, whereas this is still kind of dragging mm -hmm. my grums, gums mm -hmm. a little bit. So tannins, I would say, is medium plus. Mm -hmm. Medium plus too. I was, uh, you know, on my first impression was quite high. Um, but then again, if you go under comparison with um, Barolo or with Sangiovese, it's not as high as that. So Or even like a Shiraz. Or even a Sam Shiraz, Shiraz, yeah, Shiraz, for sure. Even Sam Shiraz. It's not, it's not that high. So I think medium plus is a good call. I think it's a medium body wine. Uh, on that one, I will go higher. Medium plus? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we will get onto the alcohol. I haven't seen. Oh, you want to go alcohol um, first? No, no, no. We can get body. But um, I feel a lot of body weight with all this ripeness. I feel a lot. Seriously. And then it goes again together. Body and alcohol, they kind of, you know, support each other. So I feel so much alcohol burning all the way down. Uh, that for me, this is, this is you know, uh, body weight is full body. And then this leads me to the next thing, which is alcohol, which is pretty much. Yeah, no, the alcohol is high. High, very, very high. So yeah. you can't really have a light body with this amount of alcohol. Well, I said medium. You said medium. I said medium body. Medium body? Yeah. Ah, okay. So that's your call. I think it's full body. Right. Well, yeah. I, I mean, your call is correct. I think. Um, I yeah. Okay, it's full body. I'm wrong. That's interesting. Good to know. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, will, I, I like to call it full body. Yeah, that's fair. And the alcohol is very high too. Yeah, so and it's 14.5%. And I felt 14. that. 14.5. I have 14 point. Yeah, that's it. 14.5. Feels high. like 15, yeah. It feels, and probably is, yeah. 15, 15 and a half. We're both not driving home after this, so don't worry. No, everybody. yeah, yeah. <laughs> if yeah. we do pick up this wine or we are listening and drinking alongside us, let's say it's five o'clock, Carlos. Mm -hmm. I've opened the bottle of wine on a Friday night with our episode. I'm going to let it open mm -hmm. and as in open up as a wine more. Yeah. 
I haven't cooked any yet, haven't organized it. Maybe I'm going to get something delivered. <laughs> what am I getting? Well, with this, I would go maybe for pizza, you know. Oh, shit. As simple as, as, simple as pizza, you know, tomato sauce uh, will go nice with this. Uh, maybe chill it down a bit, though. Uh, it feels, uh, you know, I mean, it's very alcoholic, 14.5%. So, and I think we're drinking it at the right temperature. But with the pizza, just chill it down a few minutes in the fridge, 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. And uh, it will uh, put, it, it will kind of hide the alcohol a bit. Um, and it will put more emphasis on the fruit. So I think that will be very good. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, pizza, you know, you can order it easily and it will go nice with this, definitely.